We begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Down to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It's hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and love into abundant life. Amen. <laughs> grace for our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord for this holy house and all offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Sunday, the sermon is based on the text of the second reading of Paul's letter to the second Corinthians in Corinth. He writes, so we're always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that no one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who might live, live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. Here ends the reading. Paul said these words, From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. We walk by faith, not by sight. This is what the Apostle Paul is saying to the Christians in Corinth as we continue to hear readings from this second epistle that Paul writes to the church that has such great material in it. We walk by faith and not by sight. I think Paul is stating a goal for us, maybe more so than the actual reality of it. As my experience is, it's harder to trust in things that I don't see than in things I see. And we measure things in this world by what we see versus what we don't see. Issues like faith, love, hope are tough things to measure. Yet somehow in the church or in the Christian faith, we try to measure and tackle them and do that very thing. Our goal is to walk by our faith and not by our sight. That is for sure. But too often in the faith, we pay way too much attention to what not only we see, but we worry about what others may see. I told the story that a number of years ago, some members of my previous congregation and I went for Stephen ministry training in the Holy City, which is also sometimes called Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We were there for a week-long training in a downtown hotel. Now, Stephen Ministry was founded by a Lutheran. And while it certainly goes across now many different Christian denominations these days, it's still predominantly made up of Lutherans and Lutheran churches who participate in the program. What was interesting about that training was when the sessions in the hotel were over, the group from my church decided that we would go down to the hotel bar afterwards and have a nightcap. What we discovered was a hotel bar overflowing with other patrons fresh from the training as well. 
the bartender and servers were overwhelmed, almost going frantic, trying to wait on everyone who came in there. Striking up a conversation with our server, I said, I would hate to be you right now with this being so busy. She said, we did not expect this because we are hosting a bunch of church people in our facility. I laughed and I said, you do not know us as Lutherans. And then I told her one of my favorite all-time Lutheran jokes, and that is, wherever you find four Lutherans, you find a fifth. The server laughed and said, well, let me tell you something else. Last week, we also held a church group conference. It was a large Baptist meeting of some sort. At the end of the day, our bar was completely empty. All, all the days that they were here, no one came in. But I will let you in on a little secret that happened that week we set a record for liquor sales with our hotel room room service. This is not the only story I can tell you about Lutheran gatherings and alcohol that I've experienced in my lifetime. We walk by faith and not by sight. It is interesting that we worry so much about what others will see and how they will measure our faith life because of it. So often we want to hide away in our faith that we become so worried what others might see. I can remember this feeling myself once I became a pastor. All of a sudden, I was looked upon differently. And I became uncomfortable when I would wear my collar in various places. I noticed that people looked at me differently. And I always worried about my behavior when I had my collar on because I might not be acting as appropriately as I should. Though, I have to admit, it does come in handy when you're stopped for speeding. But there is a sense of a fishbowl life when you are a pastor, as well as other occupations I know. I remember going to the grocery store during my first call and meeting a parishioner there and watching them examining the items in my shopping cart and trying to do so as nonchalantly as possible. It was a reminder that sometimes our behaviors are more out in front than we would like or desire. We measure so much in our lives by what we see, and understandably so, because what is visible, what is right in front of us, is very telling. However, when it comes to matters of spirituality, matters of faith, matters of hope, matters of forgiveness and salvation, we cannot always trust in what we see. A couple weeks ago, I quoted John Mellencamp in his lyrics that we judge by appearances and things. In other words, the beds are all made, but there's no sheets on them. In other words, we camouflage our issues. And more importantly, and unfortunately, we often judge others but by what we see in just their behaviors. For the reality is we always judge ourselves by our intentions versus judging others by their actions. Again, we judge ourselves by our intentions, but others by their actions. In other words, in our own hearts and minds, we know what our original motives are, even if we messed up. But these motives are not seen by others, just as we do not see their internal motives, just their actions. There are moments in our lives in which we want to be seen from the inside out, that we want to be seen for who we are, and all our realities, and all our struggles, and all our problems. So many times there is within us a voice that cries out for help, that cries out to be known by someone, whether it is to be loved by another, whether it is to be forgiven by another, whether it is to be fully known by another, whether it is to share a pain that is going on in our lives with others, whether it's physical, emotional, mental or spiritual, so that we can be comforted, 
so that we could be properly understood, that we could maybe even be embraced, supported, and loved even more. Sometimes people are not able to see this. There are times when we want to be discovered, yet we still find ourselves making sure that we are dressed to the T, that every hair is in the right place because we don't want others to know the inner battles and demons that we are facing. In our biblically appointed lessons these last few weeks, we are hearing a lot about the dimension of faith, about having a little or a lot. Then in our gospel text today, we have a famous few lines given by Jesus about that mustard seed and how it grows into the largest of all shrubs, meaning that even when we have a little faith and do little things because of our faith in Jesus, the one who was crucified, died, and was buried, and then rose again, that even small acts grow in great witness to others, that grow the gospel, that grow the church, that grow our love of self and others, our mustard seed faith often depends on what we see. Our mustard seed faith often falls in the trap of what we say, do, and act. It does matter, though, when we talk about our stories of faith and our individual lives. Sometimes it is the smallest of things that has led to the greatest of mushroom tree shrubs. It is the passing words of a stranger. It is the hope given by a doctor. It is the praise and encouragement given by a teacher that can make the biggest difference in our lives. My guess is that there are many of us here who can quote short little sayings or words that another person has said to us in the course of our lifetimes that we have never forgotten. Simple phrases that maybe another person doesn't even recall saying in the first place but they altered and changed our perspective, not only for our current situation, but our own self-image, our own sense of worthiness, our own sense of accomplishment, of our own sense of potential within us that grew and maybe made a difference in our very being. A mustard seed faith can change an individual. A mustard seed faith can change a community. A mustard seed faith can change a congregation. A mustard seed faith can change a country. A mustard seed faith can change the world. When we recognize that God works through us in the spirit to claim us, to forgive us, to love us, and we act to live this out, the world is changed. May we be so bold to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Nourish your faithful people through the gifts of word and worship. Guide the church in listening to and interpreting your message of grace for this time and place in history. In your wisdom, lead us in expanding the reach of your love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Nature sings your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Sustain the holy rhythms of creation, days and seasons, phases of moon and tides of the sea. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You raise the lowly and humble those in high regard. Raise up those who are victims of marginalization, discrimination, and hate. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Tend to all who journey by faith and who wait with patience for the fulfillment of your healing promises. Grant per perseverance to people doing physical and occupational therapy, many living with mobility concerns and people facing chronic pain. Merciful God, receive our prayer. As you have loved us, so let us love one another. Empower fathers, stepfathers, grandfathers, adoptive fathers, and chosen fathers to embody this gift of love for their children. Where these relationships are strained or broken, bring your comfort and peace. Merciful God, receive our prayers. With gratitude, to remember all the saints who are now at home with you, plant seeds of their wisdom and witness in our hearts that we grow in faith until we join them in your heavenly dwelling. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Amen.